It's an exercise in better proportions. It's been a long time coming to get to this point. We have the bumper tucked and sectioned, and but it's not complete. In fact, this bumper tucking episode is probably going to turn into a two-part, maybe in three-part series. But hey, if you're meeting me for the first time, I'm Grant Tommy. This is Straight Six Fan, your home for offbeat hot rodding. And yes, we are tucking the bumper on Lori G. Prix, my 1979 Pontiac Grand Prix. And I'm going to take you back to where this all started. Okay, actually, I found the brackets, the bumper mounting brackets themselves, have enough play to get this up high enough to... I, I like where it sits uh, up high. And... I know this gap looks, it's still a little, I mean, it's like a finger and a half of mine. That's okay because um, I want to suck this back. If I can match that all the way here, like, it's going to be a challenge to get far enough back, but I think we might be able to pull it off. And so let's just take a look here. This is about seven eighths of an inch gap. So right now we are. Four and four and five eighths. So let's do the math on that for a second. That means I need to go back like three and seven eighths. Now I don't know if I'm gonna get that, but I also want to get this flat spot of the bumper tucked up under the trunk lid. So tail lights are a little proud of the trunk lid. So let's see here if I could go. I can get about two inches, so we'll still be we'll still be like an inch and an eighth down here. But I'm gonna be able to weld on like a little fin or something to the end of this and help close that up. But um, so yeah, so two inches. Let's we'll see. We'll do measure measure twice, right? Yeah, two inches. All right, so we're trying to remove these uh, bumper shocks, and this top bolt kind of hard to get to on the back side to get something to keep the uh, the nut from spinning. So, you know what? A little hack here. I've got uh, that, a distributor wrench. Um, you know, like this is supposed to get under your distributor cap and tighten up the nut while you're clocking it for for timing and whatnot. But anyway, it's working out great for me. So, anyway, there's a little hack for you. Both bumper brackets off, and what I, to quote Rat Rod Bob, went and done and did was, uh, so drill down a hole in the, uh, the strut portion, right, so we could drain the oil, and um, then, well, I'll just show you how we get to here from here. Now that we have both bumper shocks out, cut, somewhat sectioned, we're gonna double check our measurements. We're gonna we said we want to take two inches out of this, so we'll we'll back that off. And then I'm gonna tack weld the piston to the uh, to the casing on the back of both sides because well we gotta get test fitted back on the car because the car's gonna go back to the transmission shop. It's leaking transmission fluid, so I want to do one round at least of test fitting, to make sure everything's good, it's functional, it works. Um, before we start just hardcore fabricating because we're not going to have the car at our disposal here in the next coming days.
so here we are for a test fit, and man, it, uh, it turned out good. Uh, perfect, perfect distance. The two inches was the perfect distance back. Now, I regret that when I was at Chad's, I didn't, I didn't cut these off of that bumper out there. So if I had a little more material, this return, I think it could just extend this. And I won't even need to bother with the filler panel, so, um, I don't know, maybe I'll reach back out to him. Maybe I'll have him send those my way. I don't know. Um, and then it needs to come in just ever so slightly. And I think if I take out about three quarters of an inch material and suck it in this way, it'll be perfect. Um, and maybe, I mean, well, that's not enough material. The three quarters of an inch isn't enough to, you know, I might be able to make this profile work on this side, but I'm not even going to try it. So, anyway, time to pull the bumper back off. <laughs> So we can uh, have it here at home, uh, so I can do the other things like patch the rust holes while the car's at the transmission shop, and uh, yeah. Well, the mock-up worked great. So I've got these shots in the right spot, the tack weld was perfect. So what we're going to do is we're going to weld these up the rest of the way, and I'll show you um, exactly what the plan is after I get the second tack on the back side on the pistons and these things. We'll bring you in closer and I'll show you exactly what the ultimate plan is. Our next step now is we're going to drill a hole all the way through the casing um, and we'll slide in like a, we'll find some old bolts or something, make like a pin, a shear pin situation and then we'll, we'll weld that to the casing. So in the event this thing ever gets in, gets rear-ended, we'll still have at least an inch of play um, but there will be a little bit of resistance, you know, the force is going to have to exceed whatever that that PSI is uh, to, to break the shear and again it's not going to make it as safe as what it was from the factory um, but uh, it's definitely going to be safer than if we just, if we just weld it solid and there is no movement um, then all that all that transfer is just going to go straight to the chassis and obviously I got to make that chassis frame horn repair because uh, that's that's going to be probably the most dangerous thing left on the car. Yeah, what I found laying around was, uh, well, I got a plethora of these because if you've ever shopped at Ikea more than three times, you'll have extra Allen wrenches of the exact same size, so that's going to be my pit. slapped some paint on those bumper brackets, but now it's time to move on to the bumper itself. And there's actually kind of like a, a substructure beneath here. So step one is we're gonna start disassembling this. We're gonna break it into the two pieces and then we can start moving the bumper like rubber strips. And we can talk about sectioning this thing. You can see this structure here I've talked about, and there are nuts every so often, and I thought maybe I would absolutely have to pull off the, the bumper strip, but as you can see, they have like this flat head, almost like a rivet, so I'm guessing it's like a square hole that keeps it from moving, so we'll just back off the nuts, and um, should be able to get this structure off, except for I shoot that guy off, and then this, uh, the quick clip got sheared off, so this one's struggling to back out because it's not grabbing on anything. Uh, so I still got to get this one out, but I uh, should be able to remove this after I navigate that. completely tore down. We're going to take it to the uh, local car wash and we're going to power wash this sucker 
and uh, then we'll get to the dirty work. All right, quick review. Here's where we're at. Of course, we got the uh, the rubber bumper uh, protectors off, and there's the hole that we knew we had for the longest time. You can see just all the little surface rust um, issues, as well as I found some really thin areas over here, and went ahead and punched those through. But it's okay because. I think where we're going to section out of the bumper is exactly there. That way we can keep the whole turn signal surround size the same. This is a, a straight part of the bumper. You can see it probably starts to bend right there. So somewhere in here. So we'll, we'll take out like, it's a little over three quarters of an inch, but we'll try to keep it at that. Um, may have to use some filler rod and we'll come in over here and do the same right at this this point. And uh, so that's where we'll, we'll tuck it side to side. And then I'm gonna get a, uh, a scotch Bright pad that goes on my mini grinder. And um, we'll see, I mean, ideally, I'd really love to powder coat this thing. I really don't have the budget for it. Um, so I'm, you know, might be just one of those things when I get the sheet metal the way I want it, I may end up just like, dousing it in primer or something and calling it good. But first things first, let's get to uh, marking out our section cut. of both both sides and passenger side turned out much better than uh, the driver's side. The driver's side we were kind of forced to cut where we cut because of the, the rust spots but um, I got a pretty good fitment just naturally. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to like tack weld on the crowns of the curves so we can make sure those you know are continuous. You see this one's a little, off a little bit. Um, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be a little trickier on the driver's side because, um, yeah. But I'm not I'm not too worried about it because again, if we like tack weld on the crowns, I feel like just with heat and stuff, I can bend this, flare this out, get these two to line up. Um, not not super worried about it, but uh, and again, this is the first time I've done this, so I'm gonna learn lessons. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's the perfect opportunity to do what I'm doing because, you know, we're trying to do things, kill two birds with one stone, right? We had this, you can actually still see where there's um, some of that material that was just so weak. So we'll be doing some filler patches there and filler patch for this. But um, I, think, I think we're gonna close out this episode now because what I wanna do is take uh, my, the slivers I trimmed out and uh, play around with the TIG welder, figure out the settings before we go and tack weld this thing. But 
it's a fun adventure so far. I appreciate you sticking around here till the end. If you want to check out some of my other um, facelift exterior videos, well, of course, over there are some cards here on the end screen. But like, comment, share, subscribe. Don't care which one you do as long as you do one. It really helps the channel out. To all my six fans out there, thanks for watching.